AIM5 platform is a bit of a mess when it comes to motherboards and motherboard chipsets. If you're interested in buying a Ryzen 7000 or Ryzen 9000 processor, there are nine main chipsets to choose from, ranging from X870E at the high end down to A620 at the low end. Trying to figure out what these chipsets provide and the differences between them isn't straightforward, especially since the release of the 800 chipset series, which has muddied the waters with the older 600 series. Today I'll be breaking it all down and clearly showing you what all the AM5 chipsets provide, how they compare and what variants are the closest to each other. I'm going to show why a B840 chipset is pretty much just A620, why X870 is basically just B650E and more. So the current AM5 lineup as it stands has 9 chipsets. The original wave released for Zen 4 Ryzen 7000 CPUs was the 600 series. This includes X670E, X670, B650E, B650 and A620. A second wave of motherboards from the new 800 series has started to roll out now, coinciding with the launch of Zen 5 Ryzen 9000 CPUs. This series includes X870E, X870, B850 and B840, with those B series models coming soon. From a CPU compatibility standpoint, all AM5 motherboards support both Ryzen 7000 and Ryzen 9000 processors with their latest BIOSes. 600 series boards released for Zen 4 are forwards compatible with Zen 5, and 800 series boards released for Zen 5 are backwards compatible with Zen 4, so you don't need a newer motherboard to support AMD's latest Ryzen 9000 CPUs. However, out-of-the-box compatibility will vary depending on the model and stock at your local retailer. All 800 series boards, so X870 and B850 for example, will support Ryzen 9000 CPUs out of the box, so you should be able to drop in any of the initial Zen 5 CPUs and get it to work without a BIOS update. For 600 series boards, support for Ryzen 9000 isn't guaranteed out of the box and may require a BIOS update before your CPU will work. Some models may ship with more up-to-date BIOSes that do work right away, some may not, it depends. But you can be pretty sure that a 600 series board will support Ryzen 7000 CPUs out of the box. I should note here that 800 series boards are only guaranteed to support the first wave of Zen 5 CPUs out of the box, including models like the Ryzen 7 9700X and Ryzen 9 9950X. Future CPU releases, such as the upcoming Ryzen 7 9800X 3D, will require a BIOS update depending on the board and when you purchase it. The good news is that updating most 600 and 800 series boards is relatively painless due to a feature called BIOS flashback. This allows you to update the BIOS of the board without needing a CPU in the socket, meaning you can upgrade to a BIOS that supports your CPU before inserting it and without the need for a second supported CPU. Look for the BIOS flashback or BIOS FLBK feature on the board you are considering. Most should have it as it's now a standard feature across the AM5 platform. Now let's take a look at chipset features. All AM5 motherboards support DDR5 memory overclocking, aka XMP or AMD Expo, right down to the lowest tier boards. Most AM5 motherboards support CPU overclocking as well, except for B840 and A620. These chipsets do not support CPU overclocking at all and do not support AMD's Easy Overclock PBO feature either, whereas the other seven main chipsets do support overclocking and PBO. While CPU overclocking is technically supported on B650 slash B850 motherboards and up, the amount of overclocking the board is capable of will vary depending on the motherboard and in particular its VRM quality. Cheaper boards with weaker VRMs may be power limited, and we've found several instances where this functionally prevents any sort of overclocking. This can be true even for motherboards that are advertised as being great for overclocking, so watch out for that. But the higher up you go in the product stack, the better VRMs typically become, and the more capable these boards are for overclocking. PCIe support varies depending on the chipset. With the AM5 platform, PCIe is available through two methods, directly from the CPU and via the chipset. But the chipset and motherboard you get affects both CPU and chipset PCIe support. Let's focus on CPU PCIe support to begin with. Most of the main AM5 CPUs support 28 lanes of PCIe 5.0. This is typically split into 16 lanes for the primary PCIe x16 slot used for graphics, two sets of four lanes for the primary M.2 SSD and other devices, and one set of four lanes which is used to connect the chipset. 
some processors like the Ryzen 7 8700G have reduced PCIe capabilities with just 20 lanes of PCIe 4.0, but most feature the full 28 lanes of PCIe 5.0. Whether or not your motherboard delivers full access to all 24 usable PCI 5.0 lanes from the CPU depends on the chipset. What we're about to talk about is what AMD guarantees from each chipset at a minimum. For the first set of 16 lanes out of the CPU, you get guaranteed PCI 5.0 support on X870E, X870, X670E, and B650E. The other chipsets, B850, B840, X670, B650, and A620, they only support PCIe 4.0 at minimum. So if you want PCIe 5.0 support through the primary time 16 slot, you'll typically need a higher tier board. In addition to this, most chipsets support splitting the first 16 lanes into a 2x8 configuration, with the exception of B840 and A620. Those chipsets, which are practically identical, only support the 1x16 configuration. Some higher tier boards include even more advanced PCIe bifurcation. For the second set of 8 PCIe lanes from the CPU, the first 4 lanes are used for the primary M.2 SSD slot. This SSD slot is PCIe 5.0 on the following chipsets. X870E, X870B850, X670E, X670 and B650E. On the other chipsets, B650, B840, and A620, AMD only guarantees PCI 4.0 at a minimum via this SSD slot. On B650, PCI 5.0 via the primary M.2 slot is optional, and some boards do support it, but it's not guaranteed. There's an additional four CPU lanes available, which AMD calls General Purpose or GPP lanes, and these could be connected to a number of different things, such as a second M.2 slot, another PCIe slot, or an onboard device. These lanes are available on all chipsets, but only at PCIe 5.0 speeds on X870E, X870E, X670E, X670E, and B650E. On B850, B840, B650, and A620, these lanes are PCIe 4.0. The chipset provides the remaining PCIe lanes on the motherboard. If you see boards with additional PCIe slots and M.2 slots, these are usually connected through the chipset beyond the first two PCIe slots and primary M.2 slot. So on a high-end board with, say, four M.2 slots, at least two of those will be connected via the chipset, generally speaking. How many PCIe lanes and their spec is determined by the chipset, and we can generally group chipsets into families with the same capabilities. X870E, X670E, and X670 all use the same physical chipset hardware, which is a dual chipset design that provides up to 12 PCIe 4.0 lanes and 8 PCIe 3.0 lanes. X870, B850, B650E, and B650 all use the same chipset as well, but this time it's a single chipset offering up to 8 PCIe 4.0 lanes and 4 PCIe 3.0 lanes. B840 and A620 use cut-down chipset hardware. B840 has 10 PCI 3.0 lanes, while A620 has 4 PCI 4.0 lanes and 4 PCI 3.0 lanes. Now I should mention here that these PCI lanes are also shared with other components on the motherboard, so not all of these lanes will be used as either PCIe or M.2 slots on every board. Ethernet, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and SATA ports will utilize some of these lanes. So if a board manufacturer wants to configure a product with four SATA 6 gigabits per second ports, they will sacrifice four PCI 3.0 lanes. 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, which is becoming the standard across AM5 models, also uses a PCIe lane. Some boards won't even use all of the available lanes, and it's up to the motherboard designer to balance all the features they want on a product. But the higher tier chipsets provide more PCIe lanes, and this enables more features on those boards. For USB functionality, this is again split between the CPU and chipset. AM5 CPUs have up to four USB 10 gigabits per second ports directly attached to the processor. The remaining USB ports are provided through the chipset, with higher tier chipsets providing more USB functionality. As far as USB 3 functionality is concerned, X870E, X670E, and X670 all provide the same chipset USB capabilities. Up to two USB 20 gigabits per second ports, up to 12 USB 10 gigabits per second ports, and up to two USB 5 gigabits per second ports. However, not all of these ports can be enabled at the same time. For example, if a motherboard vendor wants to enable two 20 gigabits per second ports, that uses up four of the 12 available USB 10 gigabits 
per second ports. So that board would have two 20 gigabits per second ports and eight 10 gigabits per second ports. In addition, these chipsets provide up to 12 USB 2 ports at 480 megabits per second. X870, B650E and B650 cut USB functionality in half. This means a maximum of one USB 20 gigabits per second port, six USB 10 gigabits per second ports, and one USB 5 gigabits per second port, plus six USB 2 ports. Enabling the USB 20 gigabits per second port reduces the number of 10 gigabits per second ports to four. Like with higher tier boards, these ports are split between rear I.O. connectors, internal motherboard headers, and even some onboard devices depending on the board. B840 and A620 cut this down further, removing support for USB 20 gigabits per second ports entirely. Maximum connectivity on these boards is just two USB 10 gigabits per second ports, two USB 5 gigabits per second ports, and six USB 2 ports from the chipset. As for USB 4 functionality, this is really the only differentiating factor between high-end 800 series and 600 series motherboards. USB 4 is mandatory on X870E and X870 motherboards and optional on all other chipsets. There are some 600 series boards with USB 4, such as the ASRock X670E Tai Chi, but not all boards support this, whereas across the X870 and X870E lineups, all boards feature USB 4, typically with two Type-C ports on the rear I.O. panel. SATA ports can be added to an AM5 motherboard at the expense of PCIe 3.0 lanes. X870E, X670E and X670 can therefore provide up to 8 SATA 6 gigabit per second ports. All other chipsets can provide up to 4 SATA ports. I just want to stress here again that these capabilities that we've been talking about are what the chipset hardware and the CPUs themselves support. It's up to the motherboard manufacturers to enable all these features on a given product. So generally what you see is that, for example, a high-end X670E motherboard will use all the chipset capabilities, whereas a cheaper, lower-tier X670E motherboard may not wire up every available port. This is where you see the main distinctions between premium and budget models within the same chipset, in addition to VRM quality and overall design. If you're shopping for a motherboard and want to know how chipsets compare, here is a simple summary. X870E and X670E use the same chipset hardware and offer the same capabilities, except USB 4 is mandatory on X870E while it's only optional on X670E. X670, so the non-E version, is the same as X670E, but the primary PCI Time16 slot is PCI 4.0, not 5.0. All three of these platforms use dual chipsets and have the most available connectivity. X870 and B650E use the same chipset hardware and offer the same capabilities, except again, USB 4 is mandatory on X870, while it's optional on B650E. Compared to X870E and X670E, you get half the maximum USB capabilities and a reduced number of chipset PCIe lanes. All four of these chipsets support PCI 5.0 for the primary Time16 and M.2 slots. B850 and B650 are functionally the same chipset hardware, except B850 makes PCI 5.0 mandatory for the primary M.2 SSD slot, while it's optional for B650. The main difference compared to X870 and B650E is that the primary Time16 PCIe slot is cut back to PCI 4.0, down from 5.0. USB and chipset PCI functionality remains the same. Neither B850 nor B650 mandate support for USB 4, whereas X870 does. B840 and A620 are also very similar, except B840 features reduced PCI chipset functionality with support for only PCI 3.0 out of the chipset. AMD tells us B840 and A620 use physically different chipset hardware, but many aspects to functionality are the same across the two. These chipsets are significantly cut back relative to the higher tier models, removing support for CPU overclocking, cutting back on PCI chipset lanes, and reducing the number of available USB 3 ports. On these boards, CPU PCIe lanes are capped to PCI 4.0 with no PCI 5.0 support at all. These are entry level chipsets. You can see from this summary that AMD have made the AM5 platform more confusing with the release of the 800 series of chipsets. Two of the new chipsets have been promoted in name only, 
X870 is a refresh of B650E, but has been bumped up to the premium X tier of chipsets. Similarly, B840 is basically a refresh of A620, but has been bumped up to the mid-range B tier. It's ridiculous in my opinion that B850 and B840 have such a similar name when B850 is a much more capable and functional chipset. Everyday shoppers looking for a B-series board, knowing that the B-series boards are usually the best bang for buck value, could end up with a crappy B840 board with limited functionality instead of the much better B850. The differences between B850 and B840 are much more significant than the differences between X870 and B850, yet the latter pair has better name separation. There's also some chipsets in this lineup which are largely unnecessary. The physical chipset hardware is unchanged in most cases between the 800 and 600 series, so X870E is a refresh of X670E and B850 is a refresh of B650. The additional capabilities of these new boards could have been included with the old 600 series family, but of course for marketing reasons AMD decided to roll out a new series. With that said, as Steve has found in his initial X870E investigation, the newer series of boards generally appear to be more feature rich and higher quality, though this has also come with an increase in price relative to existing X670E stock. What does the E stand for in X870E, X670E, and B650E? Well, that's unclear. AMD says the E means extreme, but there's no spec that is only found on E-series boards. Generally, it just means a higher tier model with more functionality than the non-E boards, but this isn't always the case, especially when comparing boards between two different vendors. Anyway, hopefully this has broken down and fully explained the AM5 chipset family for you to make it easier to find the sort of board you want. Each motherboard is going to have its own set of features that build off these chipset capabilities, so unfortunately you'll still need to sift through many, many different motherboards to compare what they offer, but at least the chipset designation does give some idea what the general specs will be. If you just want a board that's affordable and has a good range of features, generally you'll get that with B650. These boards are designed to have all the basics, support the best Ryzen processors, and pack enough ports for typical gaming builds. And because they are part of the 600 series, they have mature BIOSes and are typically a little cheaper. If you're planning to build more of a Ryzen workstation using Ryzen 9 processors, this is where the benefits of X870E and X670E become more relevant with increased connectivity. At least right now, X670E boards are typically better value, but the new X870E boards can pack even better feature sets. Anyway, that's it for this video. Hopefully you now have all the information that you need to go buy a motherboard with an AM5 chipset on it. Lots of confusing differences between these different boards. It's taken a while to really come to figuring out exactly what each board offers. Need to go a bit of do a bit of back and forth with AMD on this one to get the exact specifications locked down. Uh, but yeah, all that information is of course in this video for you now. So yeah, hopefully it has been useful. Anyway, if you want to support the channel and the videos that we make here at Hardware Unbox, then please do consider supporting us via our Patreon page. Links to that is in the description below. If you sign up, you'll gain access to some cool benefits like our monthly live streams. We've got our Discord chat, great place to chat about the latest technology and all that sort of thing. BTS content, plenty of good stuff. So thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.